1996, this computer sold for somewhere around $15,000. In 2016, I got it and six other machines from the same company in exchange for about $150 worth of old PCs. This is the Silicon Graphics O2 workstation, and in this video, we're going to take a look at what made this computer worth as much as a nice used car, and why people bought them anyway. Hey guys, this is Dodoid. So, uh, today we're talking about this thing. And I know I did mention this, whoop, it's heavy. I know I did mention this, um, on my previous video where I was basically saying that this video would be out soon. I've been very busy lately, so it hasn't been out, but, uh, my video is finally out. You're watching it now. So, uh, today we're going to take a look at this Silicon Graphics or SGI O2. And, uh, here we go. First off, even though the base model O2 cost just under $6,000 when new, and some configurations like mine were almost $10,000 more, it was actually the low-end SGI machine of its time. The higher-end workstation was the SGI Octane, which cost $25,000 for a base model, and could cost over $60,000 with higher specifications. I actually own three Octanes, but I'm saving those for a future video. Coming back to the O2, there's a reason it cost that much. The O2 was not a computer for home use, but rather for companies and professionals with large budgets and performance-intensive tasks. SGI computers are best known for their use in 3D animation and engineering, as well as for appearing in movies on occasion. Oh. We get a perimeter breed. About the only thing not unusual. It's a unit system. It's all the files of the whole park. However, being a low-end machine by SGI standards, the O2 was better suited to video editing, multimedia, and web authoring. These uses were helped out by the numerous web-related software features and optional analog and digital video input-output cards, as well as the availability of an O2 configured with additional web software under SGI's WebForce branding. Besides the uses it was intended for, the O2 was also used in medical imaging and was the basis for the Weather Channel's WeatherStar XL rack mount weather reporting system. If it isn't already clear, the O2 is not a normal PC. Instead of an x86 CPU from Intel, AMD, or Cyrix, my O2 uses an R10000 processor from MIPS Technologies, which was at the time a division of SGI, with lower-end O2s using the slower R5000. Instead of graphics from ATI, S3, Matrox, or 3DFX, the O2 uses an SGI-made system marketed simply as O2 graphics, but better known as the CRM chipset. Even the RAM is completely non-standard, and like many SGI systems, O2 RAM is unique to the O2 and will not work with any other SGI machine. As you can probably tell by looking at the machine, the case is also non-standard, with components being divided into modules that can be removed by pulling a lever, and replaced by sliding them into place and pushing the lever back up to secure them. The O2 launched with SGI's new at the time MIPS R10000 processor in the high-end models, which was the first to outperform the Pentium Pro in integer tasks, and was estimated to be two to four times as fast in heavy floating point work. Since the O2's graphics are mostly handled by the CPU, the high floating point performance benefits graphics as well. Of course, it should come as no surprise that the operating system is also made by SGI. The O2 runs IRIX, SGI's version of Unix. While it will seem somewhat familiar to users of modern Linux, differences such as slash root and slash home being absent in favor of root using the root directory of the file system and everyone else's home folder being located in slash user slash people are noticeable. The desktop environment, known as IRIX Interactive Desktop, features some interesting GUI design like crumb trails above file paths and almost every program involving icon dragging and icon pockets somehow. So, those are my thoughts on the O2. There it is. You can expect some more SGI-related videos coming soon. Uh, I have the three Octanes that I did talk about, and Indigo 2, and two Indies. So, uh, thanks for watching. We're still a very, very small channel, so um, if you'd like to see us grow, then please do subscribe. That does help. And until next time, bye.